Welcome to Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole, hosted by two nationally published Atlanta interior designers, Joanne Kandrak and Kelly Cole. These energetic women are also world travelers, charity givers, and bloggers with a wealth of information to share and stories to tell about the interior design world. Okay, now just a warning, this is going to be fun and not too serious. After all, they still do have an interior design business running at full speed. Hi everyone, it's Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole. This is our fifth episode, and today we're talking about our favorite paint colors, one of our favorite subjects. So we'll be talking about color trends, who are the major players, our favorites now, and our favorite way to use paint, our favorite colors over the years, and then our not so favorites. <laughs> so this is Kelly. Hey, everybody. Before we get to all the juicy stuff that everybody wants to know, we thought we'd have a little classroom time. And this will be really quick, so don't get bored. But we thought we'd talk about the three main players when it comes to trend forecasting for colors. And you probably know Sharon Williams and Benjamin Moore are the two, the two main guys. And then there's also Pantone. And so those are the three that we look at for, for the yearly color of the year. And I went on to Pantone's website and I thought it was is really cool. They had so much good content on there. But one thing that they they said is as individuals around the world become more fascinated with color and realize its ability to convey deep messages and meanings, designers and brands are turning to companies like Pantone that forecast global color trends for all kinds of seasonal trend forecasting, corporate branding, palette recommendations, etc. And we see these a lot you know, they start usually in the automobile industry, then they go to fashion, and then finally, a couple of years later, they, they you know, dwindle down to um, interior design. So this year, Pantone selected ultraviolet. It's a bluish purple color. And there really is a lot of psychology around color. And here's kind of the emotion or the uh, psychology behind this color. Nuanced and full of emotion, the depth of Pantone ultraviolet symbolizes experimentation and nonconformity, spurring individuals to imagine their unique mark on the world and push boundaries through creative outlets. I love that, that a color could say that. And then Pantone goes on to say, purples have lo also long been symbolic of counterculture, unconventionality, and artistic brilliance. Musical icons Prince, David Bowie, and Jimi Hendrix brought shades of ultraviolet to the forefront of Western pop culture as personal expressions of individuality. And then the other thing, um, purple is known for royalty. Yeah. It's been used in, in royalty. But how crazy that, you know, P uh, Prince, who... Da he just, he must have died after they were well into thinking about this color, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think. So we had this client, oh my gosh, 10 years ago? And she had this ginormous house that was totally empty, and, and she hired us to design the first floor, and her favorite color was purple. And we were like, um, I thought I might die. Um, yeah, we can do that. Oh, sure. But at the time, just... Uh, purple was not in the mainstream of, you know, it wasn't in any of our fabric books. It wasn't in any of our wallpaper books. It just wasn't out there. But we, f we did find it. We, I mean, we, we did. had to search we and did. we found it. And as it turns out, it ended up becoming really beautiful. We kind of like purple a little bit after that. Every time we see purple now, we'll go, oh, my God, it's Ushma. She would love this. Mm -hmm. And it, it grew on me. I used to not like purple at all, but after working on that project, I really love it. So we have definitely had some favorite Pantone colors across the, the years and and some not so favorite, mm -hmm. but my all time favorite, and it will always be 2011's color of the year, Honeysuckle. The prettiest the, pink. The best pink, the happiest pink, the deepest, most perfect pink. I just, it's And anybody perfection. that knows Kelly knows she loves pink. I do. And I'm then anybody, anybody that knows me knows that I love green. So 2013's color was emerald. Move over. Gorgeous. You love it. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. And then 2015 mm. was a wah, wah. This color was probably the most talked about in the interior design industry because designers were like revolting. <laughs> Marsala. Like, like, what is that? It's like wine. the grossest burgundy putrid. I don't know. Somebody was asleep with the whale Pantone. So, Sorry. Yeah. So in 2015, you know, there's this whole light, bright, fresh, clean, and then they 
this wine color came out. Was, so, needless to say, sorry, we were, I did not conform. We did not use it. Yeah, thank you, Pantone. I'm gonna make up and my then, own color this year. 2016 was a, a weird one. They did two colors: rose quartz and serenity. Like which, baby girl, baby boy. I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, I mean, blush is still around. That quartz, rosy quartz color is still kind of around um, into 2017 and now, and I, and it's growing on me. But that combo was not not a fave for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this year, Sherwin Williams Color of the Year, very, very excited about. It's Oceanside 6496. And it's a mix of rich blue and jewel toned tone green. I love it. And Sherwin Williams has these things that they call the uh, in between colors. So this color is basically blue, green, and yellow mixed. Mm-hmm. So it's a really unique kind of a color, um, very marine like. Mm hmm. And then what the, the psychology Pantone says is that it boosts creative thinking. It's funny that um, Sherwin Williams was kind of, cl- you know, tuned into that creative thinking as well as Pantone bringing up that artistic brilliance as well. Well, you know, when you think about it, large companies really use this information, you know, for branding, for their yeah. marketing materials, for for, for employee. Everything. Yeah. You know, you want to if you want to boost creative thinking, you, you need to put some color, you need to you know, add that to your... Yeah, and the thing I like about Oceanside is that you it can really be used in different aesthetics, you know, styles. It can be coastal, of course, but it could be mid-century modern. It could be something more co- traditional. Um, I, I love it. Yeah, it's, I love that it's really a cool color. So we're very excited because we're working on a beach house right now in Hilton Head. And if you're you know the typical beach houses you know they have the blue and the starfish and it's just so themey and we just did not want to do that although you know you're you're near the beach you blues are beautiful but we just just couldn't do the you know the typical turquoise and and blue so this kind of this marine this marine like color almost a peacock color Mm -hmm. worked really well and so we're using it in this house can't wait to share it with everybody we're installing it next month and it's it's a really cool house it's a rental uh that sleeps about 20 people it's really big and it's gonna be oh it's just serene in a really fun cool way So the last player that determines trends for color every year is Benjamin Moore. And their color of the year for 2018 is Caliente. I feel like, you know, like we should be dancing. Caliente. It's it's like, isn't it hot? Yeah. In Spanish? Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. It's AF290. It's a vibrant red. And it seems to me to have a tiny touch of orange in it. But, um... And I was thinking about red, and we have not used yeah. red in our designs in a lot. We, we, I well, mean, little punches of when it. When we but first started, every dining room was red. Oh, God, don't make What me. was that color? Um, chili. Duran. Duran. Ch- ch- red pepper? chili pepper, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, but this is this is very cool because Benjamin Moore does this, and, and Sherwin-Williams does it too. We've been to many of their color forecasting seminars. But Benjamin Moore has a team of just seven people that work all year long to determine the color of the year. They visited 12 countries, 30 cities, went to 23 industry shows, took 42,000 photos, all to determine just this one color. Oh, oh our there's boss, my puppy. Our boss, boss, stop barking. Boss is screaming at us. Okay. So I just thought that was so cool to come up with this one color. Yeah. So yeah. red, another one of those, you know, psychological things. It's symbolic, smart, signifies change and strength. Uh, and so, yeah, I just I, I love it. I just don't see um, using it in today's designs. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. All right. You keep talking about all the ways we love to use paint. And I'm going <laughs> to let little Stinky here out and go play with everybody upstairs. <laughs> okay. So there's some there's some things that you can do to really, you know, paint is a great way to transform spaces. And it's not an expensive way to do it. So what we love to do is take your basic spindles on your staircase with kind of the oak banister and paint those spindles white and the banister in like a high gloss black. It's it's a beautiful look, kind of has like a piano-like feel. That's one great way to do it. Contrasting colors for doors makes a huge change. Um, ceilings, paint a ceiling in a small bathroom. It's just a quick way to give it some personality. And then what we've seen a lot of lately are these gorgeous new doors uh, and, win- I'm sorry, yeah, windows 
and trim that are done in, in an iron, like a black iron. Uh, if you can't afford to do that, painting them black will give you kind of that same look. That's pretty cool. And Kelly, you can tell about the sheen level. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm back. Naughty puppy barking at me. Um, another way to really have fun with paint is to play with the sheen levels. You know, if you change the sheen level, it really changes the hue ever so slightly. So let's say you are totally infatuated with this one color and you want to paint the entire room, trim doors and everything this color. Consider varying the sheen not just one notch, but two or three. So for example, maybe you have satin on the walls and you've got high gloss on the trim and it's the same exact color. It, it It's a it really it, cool look, yeah. And really funk it up to a lacquer ceiling. I don't know if you guys have seen anything like this, but Suzanne Castler did a beautiful one in a, oh, in a show yes. house. It's shiny, shiny. It almost looks like glass. It's really cool. Yeah. So let's get to the juicy part. Everybody wants to know. Okay, so if you are... If you have a pencil and paper, this would be great to take notes because there's some great colors. If you're driving or can't write this down, uh, at the end uh, or on our website, if you go into the episodes, there will be show notes and all this information will be there. So a favorite, favorite color is called Logia. It's Sherwin-Williams 7506, a warm, taupey tan with a little hint of gray. Mm -hmm. That's a good color. We haven't used that in a while. We kind of mm -hmm. OD'd on it, but it's a good color when... Let's say you have a more traditional home and you're trying to kind of make this transition to a little more contemporary, but you just can't make this massive jump. And it's a it's it's a clean it's a clean tan with that little bit of gray in it. Yeah. And, and and once again, uh, the light in your home will will make these colors sort of change. So if you if you want to try these, I'd say get a large sample. It'll change in different rooms with different light. Yeah, and when it, if it doesn't look good in your home, don't be like, oh, my God, Kelly and Joanne totally don't know what they're talking about because the light really does change and with all everything. And with all this different lighting, LED, and, you know, things can really change. Um, so now if you're looking for a really pretty, serene uh, color for a bedroom, white blue, Benjamin Moore, HC143. I had it in my bedroom for 11 years love that color yeah it's really good and being the color queens that we are we are always have color exploding in all of our designs but last year we started um to use a lot more original art than we ever had before in our designs and so we really needed a white backdrop to let that all that art pop and so we started painting some some rooms white and one of our all-time favorites is West Highland White. It's Sherwin-Williams 7566. And we've used it on walls, ceiling, trim, mm -hmm. combinations thereof. It's, the, white, it's, the white wall is truly back. I mean, you look in mm -hmm. shelter magazines, Pinterest, house, a lot of white walls. But it's not a glaring in your face, fluorescent, mm -hmm. ouch white. It's It's got a tad of cream in it. And, you know, a lot of times people will have plantation shutters and they're not really white, white. They're kind of like really creamy, but they're desperate to paint all their trim and freshen up. This is a good color that that can go yeah. with with that. Uh, another great white that I love um, is White Dove, Benjamin Moore, OC-17, a, a really big favorite uh, with designers. It's just a soft, pretty. Isn't that what you just painted your bedroom bedroom and bath yeah. yeah i went from white blue to white dove another favorite tricorn black um sherwin williams 62 58 a lot of blacks have purple in them some have uh gray they're just kind of charcoaly brown but this is a true true black that we really have had luck with over the years but just make sure that you use a primer that has a that is tinted black prior to painting with this color because yep. like reds you will be painting 10 colors and it will never quite look right yep. um and then this one actually if if i had any say so would be the color of the year for yeah, me yeah me too salty dog it's sherwin williams 9177 it is the prettiest navy blue uh, we just painted it on the ceiling of a dining room yeah it's it's just a classic True, True navy. Yep. I, I just, I yep. love it. Yep. And then the color of my entire house is Repose Gray, Sean Williams 7015. Just such a light, 
it's not cold, it's not warm. When the sun plays on it, it's so great. It doesn't play tricks. It's just a nice. I think we have sourced this color I, I more know. than more than any other color. I know, and I hate to fall back on the same color over and over again because I don't feel like I'm is, being creative. When something's but so good, you got you just got to keep doing it. I just love it. it. Yeah, and then this is this is a good one. Agreeable gray, Sean Williams seven o two nine. This is kind of what you would call a grayish. Mm-hmm. which is like a gray and a beige together. If you have a lot of, you know, brown tones in your house and you kind of want to, you know, update it, but you can't change everything else, agreeable gray is just a nice mix of gray and beige. It's more gray than loggia, definitely. But it's not a, all, it's not a pure, pure gray like repos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then for greens, of course, my favorite color, Green Thumb, which is Bedroom More CSP 870. This is the color that I um, painted on my lacquered buffet and my screened-in porch. Such a pretty happy green. A good spring green, like not uh, not a moss, not an emerald, you know. Yeah. yeah, I like it. And then, you know, we don't source a lot of yellows, uh, but this color, if you like yellow, Freedom Trail, it's Ben Moore's 277. I use this color to paint the wood part of my Biedemeyer sofa. It's a very, another again, happy color, a uh, pretty yellow. Yeah, it has a mm-hmm. tiny bit of gold in it, I feel like. It's not yeah. like scary yellow. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we did something exciting our, a few shows back where we asked um, – people to go to our website, candrac colcom and click on the podcast tab. And when you click on the podcast tab, there's a green tab that says, talk to us. And so we reached out to people and asked, please go on there and ask us questions about paint in anticipation of this show. And we got some calls. Yeah, we were excited. Yeah. <laughs> and so going forward too, if I know that there's um, a lot of times we get asked the same questions over and over by people. And It's probably something, if you have a question, it's probably something somebody else is interested in knowing. So please don't be shy. Yeah. Um, Talk to us. Just click that button and just ask us about anything. We may just have one show just answering questions because people really like to know. Yeah. So let's go to our very first call, and I'm so excited. Hi, Kelly and Joanne. My name is Donna Thomas, and I'm calling uh, because my kitchen, I just painted the cabinets white, and I have tropic brown countertops, which I'm not very happy with, but I can't afford to change those. What would be a good neutral tone color, maybe in the gray family, to paint my walls? Thanks. Donna, that's an awesome question. Donna, I'm we, so excited. We, we just kind of talked about this. So when you have those browns, and a lot of times the countertops have those brown tones, yeah. and, and replacing your uh, granite countertops is kind of a pricey. So if you really just want a quick fix and want to paint, there we go again, that agreeable gray. Yeah, that would um, be a good one. Or there's another Sherwin-Williams color called alpaca, and it would be a great way to sort of, you walk in and it doesn't feel that neutrally brown. It feels great. It feels a little fresher, a little newer. So mm-hmm. I think that's um, that's a great and question. And if you go to your Sherwin-Williams store and you look at agreeable gray and you're like, oh, that's not... That's it's just not working. Stay on the wheel in that you know in that area, and you and, and as long as you you if you don't wander too far, you'll. A you'll lot probably of times okay. when you're looking at when you're looking at that wheel, the very bottom color, the darkest color, um, as it goes up. So if you're looking at the very bottom and it's very brown, you it's know an indicator it's an indicator of indicator what's in that color. Yeah, and so if you kind of stick between the browns and the grays. That will help you find that. that right yeah, like color. sometimes I'm looking at the wheel and I'm thinking, I think that has purple in it, but I'm not sure. And if you look sure all enough. the way down to the darkest, you're like, yep. oh, it definitely has purple mm-hmm. in it. I don't mm-hmm. want that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Okay. So that was awesome, Donna. So let's um, let's pull up our next call in. Hi, this is Nancy from Clarion, Iowa, and I have a question about what color to paint the outside of my house. I haven't updated the paint color for about 20 years and I'd like it to be updated. I have sort of old blue shutters and I have a brown roof um, and I just want something fresh and modern. What do you recommend? Iowa. I'm I, I so know. impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Proud. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, you know, I'm glad you, you told us the um, color of the roof because that's very, you know, yeah, that's, that's very, important. very yeah. important. So, I would suggest there's a great color that's an exterior color, uh, Sherwin-Williams, again, Downing Sand. 
mm-hmm. and I would chuck the blue shutters yep. and would suggest, uh, it's a beautiful color called weathered shingle. That's one of my favorites. Weathered yeah. shingle. And then trim for outside, we usually use what? Creamy, C- creamy or alabaster. Um, alabaster. Yeah. But I would definitely um, paint, sta- you know, paint samples all over your house because like my last house was so the afternoon sun was so bright that I had to go much darker than I what had originally anticipated or else it would just been washed away it you wouldn't have gotten the vibrancy of the colors at all yeah yeah so well thank you Nancy that was awesome okay one more this is so fun okay one more call in Hi, my name is Kelsey and I live in Charleston, South Carolina. I have a fireplace in my living room and I really don't like the color brick. So I'm wondering if that's something that I could paint. And if so, what colors would you recommend? I love this question. I love Charleston. (laughs) (laughs) This is a great question. I would say, well, I'm a white brick fan girl. I have in my house which is a new house actually, I have brick all the way up my fireplace and wrapped around my fireplace and intentionally installed the brick and then painted it white. I think I used super white, um, but my house is a little bit on the contemporary side, so that worked. But the outside of my house has brick on it too, and I painted it worldly gray, which in the sun almost looks white but it's it's got a tiny tint of gray to it so. i know i know people are afraid but paint the brick people paint the brick paint it's, the brick it's so pretty it's yeah, so pretty it really is yeah. you have painted brick in your house yeah, yeah i do i painted my brick in my in my family room and it's like a creamy white and the mantle's the same color it it makes it look a lot more updated not so traditional well i love it people say oh i should take that brick away but it's such good texture in yeah. the room it's yeah. such good dimension leave it it's kind of like paneling people mm-hmm. are like oh rip that stuff down no leave it up but let's paint it it's a great texture it's a great yeah. architectural element but yeah. it's really awesome painted yeah so yeah. don't be afraid so well, thank you for those call yeah, thanks, thanks, guys fun. please yeah. call us keep, keep talking to us yeah, we yeah, love yeah. that okay so it's time for the quote of the day And here it is. Rooms are albums that provoke memories. What you decorate with should remind you of a street you wandered down or an experience that made you happy. That's designer Amy Hayes. I love that. I do too. It's kind of Nate Berkus, you know, things that yes. ma- things that matter are what what you should put in your home. And colors too. You know, if if you you know, obviously gray is all the rage right now. Um, if you don't like it. Don't put it in your house just because you know it's trendy and it's out there because trends are that. They're trends. And eventually there will be a new trend. But I think as long as things are very well done, kind of like Ushma's House in Purple Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. still looks amazing to this day, I'm sure, and it it speaks to you and makes you feel good, then – then go for it. You know, we're just kind of sharing some of our favorites and ones that have standed the test of time. But, um, you know, it's it's very, very personal, just like Pantone and Benjamin Moore and Sharon Williams were reiterating. There's deep psychology in color, and it's, it's really – we do a ton of color consultations because it's really important to get it right. Yeah. 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 So I'm kind of excited for next week's show. Um, we're going to be talking about this beach house in Hilton Head and about – outdoor design and kind of that durable the, the performance durable performance fabrics and everything in yeah, design yeah so even if you if you have a, a lot of windows on the exterior in the interior of the room using some umbrella fabrics and things like that will give you the scoop on all the ways to be able to live uh, beautifully but comfortably yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think that um, that will apply not only to you know spring and summer's coming and beach living and outdoor living but also just plain old performance Mm -hmm. everybody has dogs and cats and everybody has kids or grandkids and wine is spilling and and so it's all going to kind of tie into how we did this there's a really a lot of science science behind it they've perfected this these fabrics are they're not scratchy like you would think for some umbrella they're really really great and like you said that house um it it rents I think you said 20 people, but I swear it's like 27 or something. But when you've got that many people in there and the potential to just trash the place is is real and it's a it's a pricey, pricey house, you got to we had to be really cognizant of what we were putting in that house. Yeah. Yeah. So. So 
Uh, like I mentioned before, in the show notes, you can kind of see, you know, what we've talked about today. And we'll try to put some some photos up there too. But in the meantime, we've got a lot uh, of photos on our website, wwwcandrac Um, You can go to um, our portfolio where it shows um, kitchens and baths, residential, residential. we we'll do some commercial charity. work, charity work, and also to the podcast to see what the other episodes are. And, um, and I think that's yeah. it for today. Yeah. That was fun. All right. Well, keep calling us and keep in touch with us. We love to stay connected. And we will see you all next week. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Join Joanne and Kelly weekly for a lively conversation about trends, travels to industry events, current design projects, the good, the bad, and the ugly, do's and don'ts, product recommendations, and more. Be sure to follow the fun on Facebook. They're on Instagram, at Candrac Cole. And of course, you've got to visit them online at candrac-cole.com for more information.